The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... I'm E.G. Marshall with another adventure in the macabre. I'm a collector of stories about experiences which are out of the ordinary and which most of us would prefer to avoid. Still, I find a perverse kind of pleasure in sharing the unexpected and the bizarre. It purges my own concerns about the unknown. And there is so much that is on our planet and in the universe as a man named Al Wilson, a farmer who lives near Bolton, Connecticut, found out after encountering a phenomenon. Darned if I know what to do with it, Carrie. You'll have to get rid of it. Well, thank you, lucky stars, it didn't destroy the barn. When's that astronomer going to be here? Dana, is that his name? Yeah, Charles Dana. He'll be here first thing in the morning. He was pretty excited. Then ask him to take it away. It makes me nervous. It might be radio whatever they say. Radioactive, and that's dangerous. Our mystery drama, The Meteorite, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor and stars John Beale. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the Sinus Medicines, and General Electric Citizen Band radios. I'll be back shortly with Act One. I suppose that at one time or another you stood outside and looked up in wonder at the night sky and the endless panorama of the stars. We've landed men on the moon... And we've sent space rockets to circle Mars. But as we learn more about the universe, we learn how little we really know. It is infinite. Emerson wrote, There is no chance, no anarchy in the universe. All is system and gradation. Every god is there sitting in his sphere. True? Al Wilson didn't know it when he and his wife returned from evening service at their church, but he is about to find out. Aren't you going to put the car away, Al? I'll do it later. Garrett mentioned checkers. You're invited over, too. Does Maud know? I suppose so. Look at them stars. My goodness, what a fine night. Mm. Glad I brought in the rest of them tomatoes. Yep. We'll have frost tonight. Now, oh. look left above the barn, way up in the sky. See? A big kind of cone of light. I've never seen anything like that this close. Listen. Wind's come up. Look at that thing. Must be traveling fast as lightning. Alex, it's, it's coming this way toward our farm. Better go inside. Let's get away from here. It's headed toward the house. We'll be blown up. Come on. It's slamming down over the barn. Do you feel that heat? I've never seen anything like this. There goes the barn. Look. Look. itself is far past you. Never in my life. Are you all right? I've never been so scared in my life. It could have destroyed everything else. Look out there. What is that cloud rising from it? Oh. oh, I've got to tell Garrett. We'll take a look at it. No, no, you won't. I don't want you going near that thing. And Garrett either. How do you know it won't blow up? Just a burnt out chunk of rock, Carrie. But it exploded once it hit the ground. Well, sure, because it was red hot. Now it's cooling off. There's no danger. No, now. you come into the house. But Garrett will want it all. I'll telephone him. I won't have either of you prowling around that thing tonight. Well, okay. I guess it can wait a little morning. I'm a little leery of it myself. <laughs> Every 
everything all right, Garrett? Or is the washing machine upside down? Oh, no, no. No damage, darling. <sighs> no, no cracks in the cellar. None of the preserves fell off the shelves. I gave the washing machine a reassuring pat and said goodnight. How can you be so calm, Garrett? We pay high enough taxes on this little house. Oh, come on, come on. Now, Maud, calm yourself. Huh? It, it's over with. Oh, that's what you think. It's an outrage. And the mayor's going to hear about this. Ah, yes, but blast, they must. There's to be progress. <laughs> progress? My foot. They wreck a perfectly beautiful mountainside. For what? Another ribbon of concrete leading nowhere. Paid for out of our money. And what's the rush? Why do they have to shake my fillings loose on Sunday night? <laughs> I, I find that a little too zealous. Oh, the mayor's going to get an earful when he strolls into his office tomorrow morning. Blasting to widen the road while people are sitting down to Sunday supper. Okay, okay, but I refuse to have a, the big one over something over which I have no control. The big one? Yeah, that's school kid jargon. Oh. <laughs> Cardiac arrest. No, sir, not for Garrett Smith. Uh, if you want to quarrel, honey, you just telephone the mayor. I will. Or, or calm down. Uh, honey, there was no damage done, so put the experience behind you. Ah, saved by the bell. If it's for me, tell them I'm gluing in my fillings. <laughs> Hello, Garrett Smith. You hear the blast, old pal? Oh, yeah, yeah. It put Maud in space. Any damage to the farm? Just a trench in the far pasture. You know, where Tompkins cuts across the state road. Uh, yeah, but that, that's a long way from where they're working, Al. Who? Who's working? Where? Well, you know, the crew that's blasting on the mountainside. What crew? I'm talking about the explosion. Well, so am I. Well, they don't blast on Sunday night, Garrett. You, you don't know what happened? No, uh, I guess I don't. A shooting star landed ten minutes ago in my far pasture. A, a, what? You kid? You mean a, a... Come on over. Maybe we can persuade Carrie to let us investigate. You mean that a meteorite landed on your farm? Well, you tell me. You're the science teacher. Come on over. Oh, yeah, right away. Well, what was that about? A meteorite? Don't blame the state, honey. Don't blame the mayor. Blame a phenomenon. A ph yeah, that explosion that shook the house... That was not from blasting. A meteorite landed on Al's farm and plowed up half his far pasture. Terry, how terrified. I tell you, my legs turned watery. I yelled at Al to run, but I couldn't, and he stood there wide-eyed. Marvelous. Well, all that's marvelous is that it didn't hit the barn or the house. It, it, it hit, and then what? Well, the air got warm all around us, and it... Steam came up from the thing. Is it a fallen star, Garrett? Well, that's what most of us call it, but the proper name for it is meteorite. It comes, you know, from outer space. So do lots of funny things. At least some people think so. Yeah, including me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, really, I'm, I'm serious. Now, now, flying saucers, for instance, they are fact. No, but we, we won't argue about that You now. believe that stuff, Garrett? Absolutely. Well, I'm glad I don't. There's enough just around the farm to make me watch my step. I don't need funny little creatures that look like toadstools peeking in through the bedroom window. <laughs> <laughs> just just what is one of these meteorites? Well, it's burned out rock. See, it, it broke loose in outer space and out of the orbit of its own planet, and then it just kind of flew loose. Uh, see, once in a while, the gravity of Earth pulls down fragments, and they land here and there. Now, most of them burn out in the sky. They look like, you know, streaks of light. On fire from friction. Yeah, exactly. So the chances of one reaching Earth are very small. Well, we've got one. And it's no rock. It's a big, long thing. Looked in the sky like a missile, like a torpedo. Huh. Incredible. I mean, I, I don't know too much about meteorites, but I know who does. Professor Charles Dana at the State University. I studied under him. Hell... You know what you ought to do? Well, all I want to do is get rid of the thing. No, Dan is your man. Now, why don't I try to reach him? He'll want the meteorite for the astronomy lab. He's welcome to it. Just tell him to haul it away. Right, right. First, now, now don't flip out, Kerry. First, I've got to see it. But if it explodes... Well, how can it explode if it's just a rock? Didn't I tell you so? 
Why don't you and Maud come along with us? No, thank you. You two play space cadets. Carrie and I will needlepoint. <laughs> Al, you're going to be famous. Sure. Maybe they'll name the thing after. <laughs> Garrett, uh, is there uh, is there any danger from well radioactivity or, or disease? Oh or no, no, more not oh not from the little I know anyhow. Now, we won't go too close to it, so just don't worry. Oh, we won't be long. Set up the car table. We'll play some bridge. We'll be back. Give me the creeps, Carrie. I feel the same. There's something eerie about a thing coming down from outer space. Makes you wonder what's really up there. Wow. That is incredible, Al. Yeah. I wonder where it came from. And the size of it. It must be must be twelve feet long. Yeah. Oh, boy, it sure plowed up some some trench there, eh? Yeah, the outside looks like slag. Uh-huh. Uh, that, that's what it is. Who knows where it came from? Your guess is as good as mine, and I teach science. Well, I tell you, Alice, it's beyond me. I can't explain why more of it wasn't burned up on its passage through our atmosphere. It was red hot. You should have seen the glow. Mm. Felt the heat. It's cold now. I'm eager to see it in the morning when the sun's up. Well, keep the news to yourself, Garrett, will you? I, I don't want people driving out traipsing all over the farm. Right. I'll I'll try to get in touch with Professor Dana. Oh, fine. If the university wants a thing, he'll need a lift and a truck. Right. I'm not going to pay to have the thing taken away. window a little more out. It's warm in here. Or, or get rid of this top blanket. Uh, what? Warm? Oh. Well, why'd you wake me up out of a sound sleep? Open the window. It is open. Mm. Open it more. It's stuffy in here. And come back to bed. Oh, boy. It's cold out there. The frost looks like a light covering of snow. I can see the meteorite real clear. Garrett's crazy, and he makes you that way. Oh, no kidding, Carrie. It is kind of impressive. People don't have a meteorite land near them every week in the month. Garrett said only about a thousand have been recorded. Come to bed. Maybe I ought to keep the thing. Invite people to come see it. That Professor Dana will be here first thing tomorrow. Now, come on, get some sleep. Okay. Carrie. Oh, my stars, what is it? Come here. What? What's the matter? Look out there. You see the meteorite? Well, sure. You see what I see? It, well, I don't, it, it looks higher. It, it, it's changed. So what? Oh, this floor is like a slab of ice. You know why it's changed? Take a careful look, Carrie. Good Lord. You see it? Yes, I do. What does it mean? I don't know. But it's... It's opened up. The meteorite did what? Opened up? The Wilsons are steady people, so we have to believe what they see. There is, however, no evidence that a meteorite is anything more than a burned-up piece of rock. Is what they have seen impossible to believe? Impossible is a slippery word, hard to pin down. More about this phenomenon when I return with Act Two. I began, uh, you may remember, by saying that I'd share with you the bizarre, the unexpected. I've done so. 
A meteorite is a rare occurrence. I doubt if any of you has seen one except in a museum. But for Al Wilson and his wife Carrie, it is more than a piece of burned out rock. Last night, a meteorite plunged through our ozone and like a huge missile, found its earthly mark in Al's far pasture. That in itself was unique. So is the fact, uh, if his eyes did not imagine it, that the meteorite opened up. It is seven the next morning. Well, that'll be Garrett or the professor. You just finish your breakfast, Al. Well, bring him in. Either one of them for a cup of coffee. Good morning, Jerry. He's in the kitchen. Uh, come along, Garrett. Have a cup of coffee. Oh, thanks. Oh, I suppose you've been up since five as usual. I have. Carrie Law's in bed until almost six. <laughs> well, how'd you like my news? Well, I didn't believe it till I saw it for myself. On the road, it, it does look like it's opened up, like a like a giant clamshell. Yeah, you ever hear of anything like that before? No, oh, no one has. Here's some hot coffee, Garrett. Ah, oh, thanks. No, sugar's on the table. Mm. What could it mean? Well, not much, I'd say. It cooled fast and cracked open. You're going to be able to see this through with me? Oh, I wouldn't miss it, Al. Maud will telephone the school at 8 and say I won't be teaching today. At what time is it, huh? Mm, a little past 7. Well, uh, Professor Dana... Do you see it? Oh. A car is pulling into the driveway. I'll let him in, Carrie. You start some breakfast for him. Lots of smoked ham. That's great with fresh egg. You took classes with Professor Dana? Mm-hmm. Two. I was a science major. Good morning, uh, uh, Mr. Wilson. Uh, I'm Professor Dana. Yes, Professor. Come right in. Yes. Thank you. Oh, just, just put your coat over here on the new post. And come out to the kitchen. My wife, Carrie, is stirring you up a real farmer's breakfast. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, Garrett Smith is with us. He's my neighbor, my best friend. Oh, and once a student of mine yeah. many years ago. Well, hello, Professor. You probably won't remember no, me. No, indeed I... I do, Garrett. It's good to see you again. Uh, good good morning, Mrs. Wilson. Good morning, sir. Have some coffee while the eggs are frying. I'll do that. Uh, uh, Garrett, uh, as I recall, you were going to become a research biologist, but love sweet song. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Professor. That's right. I got married, and I've lived happily ever after. Uh, Al, tell Professor Dana what happened. Well, sir, the thing, uh, it, it opened up. Uh, the the meteorite opened? Yeah, yes, sir. Garrett says maybe it, it cooked real fast and cracked open. Uh, he could be right. Uh, still, a meteorite is fused by the tremendous heat it generates, so... Offhand, I, I find it hard to believe that it uh, cracked open. Well, the whole thing is hard to believe. You haul it away today, Professor? Oh, yes. The uh, the lifter and truck will be here later today. We'll we'll have the meteorite on its way to stores before six o'clock. Here you are, Professor. Smoked ham. Wonderful. Everybody likes it. <laughs> I'll be glad when the thing's off our property. It gives me a funny feeling. Yeah, I understand. It's, uh... Rather awesome, isn't it? Oh, go see it. All three of you fidgeting. Now still be coffee when you get back. Go along, all of you. <laughs> uh, anything to carry, Professor? Uh, yes, yes. I, I have my cameras in the trunk of my car. Uh, at your service, sir. I'll get them for you. Now, don't you go be being brave, Al, like stepping into that thing. It could snap shut, and there you'd be. Now, don't be nervous, Mrs. Wilson. There's nothing to fear. But what if there was something in there that just... Had to get out. What? You say it's it's not a meteorite, Professor? It's something much more important. It's a space capsule. I don't get it. Neither do I. But look. Look inside. You, you see the struts and, and the pane of glass? Yeah. Huh? A, a space capsule, but... From, from where? Let's take a look inside. Uh, uh, give me the camera with the strobe light, Garrett, please. Yes, sir. Al? Al, this, this is a nightmare. You suppose some lunatic was experimenting with some kind of missile? That this thing was shot from somewhere and wobbled around and then just came down here? I don't know. Good Lord. There's something in there. Uh, uh, 
Shine a flashlight into the interior, Garrett. I, I see it. Al, take a look. What? It's... It's some kind of man. About the size of a six-year-old boy. But with an old face. And elongated ears. It's a man from space. You think he's dangerous, Professor? He's, he's dead or, or unconscious. Well, if he's alive and hurt, we've got to get him out. Garrett, go tell Carrie. The professor and me will get him out. Okay. Okay, wait till she hears about this. Uh, looks safe enough. What opened up was an escape hatch covered with slag. I'll lower myself. Hold up the hatch, will you? Right. Sure cramped in here. Come on. Shit. Hey. He's alive. Come on, pal. Come on. We'll get you out of here. Lift out his head first. Oh, he's real light. I've got him. And here I come. A miniature man. What a discovery. Did you catch that, Professor? No, uh, Barely. It's um, some, some kind of signal. Well, how come it sounds like English? It's beyond me. Well, let's get him to the house and try to bring him around. Look. He's, he's opening his eyes. I you. I understood that all right. Take it easy, pal. We want to help you. Just joy. Right now, if you need some warm food and a bed, you get well. Then you do what you please. Command ship comes for me. Uh... He, uh, he could be dangerous, Mr. Wilson. Well, what do you want me to do? Shove him back into his capsule? The little man's hurt. Uh, yes, yes, I see. Well, uh, let's carry him to the house. I, I hope we're doing the right thing. We are, Professor. You're worried, aren't you, Professor? Yes, this, uh... This should be reported to Washington. Oh, let's wait a while. I don't want an army of scientists swarming all over the place. But this, this crook, if that's his name, he could bring us knowledge of an unknown world, Al. The planet he comes from, space trips, hundreds of things. A view of the universe from millions of miles away. Well, but I'm not going to have him hammered at. The little man is sick. And uh, after he's well? I don't know. That's up to him. Anyway, you heard what he said. Yeah. Destroy. And something about a command ship. Professor, what do you make of this? Yeah, I can only guess. Croc was in a manned capsule. His mission? I have no idea. Sophisticated exploration, perhaps. Something went wrong with his ship. He got caught in the Earth's atmosphere. The capsule went out of control. As it came down, it began to blaze. It's, it's incredible that it didn't disintegrate. Hmm. What about that command ship? Oh, that's easy, Garrett. Crook expects to be rescued. And you've got him right here in the house. Because he's half dead. Carrie's trying to shove some life back into him now. He kept saying, destroy you. For safety's sake, I, I think Crook should be removed. Where to? back to the capsule. Uh, I'll truck the capsule and him back to store. Sorry, I won't do it. The capsule is yours. Crux stays here until he goes home. I'm going to see how he is. Well, what about the police, Garrett? Uh, well, it's a small force, Professor. Not much protection against whatever you're thinking. I sympathize with Mr. Wilson's feelings. He's a decent man, but... He doesn't realize the scope of this discovery. Croc could open up a, a new world to us. Well, look, why don't I speak to somebody in space control? Ask him to send a man down to see the capsule and meet Croc. Yeah, Garrett, you're risking a friendship. Well, I'll chance it if you can postpone picking up the capsule for a day or so. Oh, that's easily done. Good. Then, uh, 
And I told you, and you, sir, you are my house guest. <laughs> That's very kind uh, of you. No, it'll be an honor. Well, I, I think your suggestion is sound, Garrett, but uh, you'd better tell him about it. Go. Yeah. After the person from Space Control arrives, not before. You can't crowd a Connecticut farmer like Al. This is his land and his home, and nobody better forget it. He sure looks better, Carrie. He's a nice little man. Like the hot bullion. Didn't you, Mr. Crook? Yes. It was very good. You still out to destroy me? I do not know. Humans are enemies of my people. They are? We don't even know who your people are. When we fly here and land, you fire guns at us. We found Earth, and we have come here out of curiosity. But you drive us away. Now we will destroy you. He won't tell me where he's from, Al. I asked him. No. I will not tell. How come you speak English, Crook? We know all languages. Our minds are as advanced as our weapons. Then use that great mind of yours. You'll understand we don't mean you harm. I thought you would kill me. Well, now you know different. I will leave you in peace. I do not understand why you have been kind. Well, you were hurt. That's only decent. You said, Crook, you'd leave us in peace. Yes. The command ship will take me and the capsule away. Oh, you may be crook, but the capsule goes to the state university. No. If you try to remove the capsule, there will be destruction. The truck, the men, the capsule will be destroyed. Turned to ashes. Well, I don't know what to do. I, I gave my word. Heed what I say. Do not risk destruction. I will return to the site and await the command ship. You do nothing of the sort. It's cold out there. Cold and heat do not affect me. You'd better speak to the professor, Al. Yeah. You stay here while I do. Hi, Professor. Hey, hello there, Mr. Wilson. How's our little man from space? Well, he's uh, given me a problem. Crook yeah. uh, uh, warned me that if we remove the capsule, all hell's going to break loose. The truck and the men will be destroyed. We don't really know what we're dealing with, Mr. Wilson. Well, that's why I'd go along with Crook. I know that means calling off the truck, but... Well, uh, there's been a delay there anyway. Oh? Where's Garrett? Did he go home? Yes, yes. I'm uh, spending the night with him. Oh. Well, if you'll excuse me, Professor, I have to get out to the barn. Milking time. Uh, uh, one minute, Mr. Wilson. Yes? I... Well, I'm afraid I've acted deceitfully. You're a very decent man. Uh, Garrett thought that... No, no. Let me take the blame. For what? Someone from our National Space Center will be here sometime tomorrow. I don't like that, Professor. I know you don't. I said I wouldn't allow Crook to become a part of no freak no, show. No, 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 he, he won't be, I, I assure you. Reporters, no, cameramen. Nothing like that. I, I've told you the truth. And I've told Crook that we're his friends, not his enemies. Mr. Wilson, the enormity of this discovery... Oh, you've done something. We're stuck with it. Okay. Let the man come. But understand this. I don't care if the man's the president. He tries any rough stuff with a crook, and I'll kick him out. And that goes for Garrett and for you too, Professor. Yes. Like I, I can't tell you how a crook will feel. I think he trusts us. I'll tell him about this guy you're bringing in, but I can't be responsible for what crook might do. Of course not. Well, you, you just say that. I believe the little man knows what he's talking about. If he says you go up and smoke... And that's what's going to happen. The Wilson.
Russians have treated the man from space as they would any injured person, with kindness and attention. Garrett Smith and Professor Dana, however, want to treat Kruk as an incredible discovery, which he and the capsule are. What Kruk does is all that matters, and we'll find that out when I return shortly with Act Three. turn to the universe, we fantasize and give up. Reports of flying objects make news, but no one takes these science fiction occurrences too seriously. So it was with the Wilsons until, accidentally, they had a visitor from outer space, a small, man-like creature named Kruk. Thank you for telling me. Mr. Wilson. Oh, it won't be so bad, Crook. The guy just wants to ask you some questions. And the man will arrive? In the afternoon, I'd say. The truck's supposed to arrive later. Why did your friend not have the truck arrive today? Guess they took you seriously. I told them what you said, that the truck would be destroyed. That will happen. You know that? Yes. I have given you the warning. It is arranged. Your men will try to remove the capsule, and the ray will reduce the truck to ashes. But not if they don't touch it. They will. Yeah, I, I believe what you're saying, Crook. I have been in touch with the Space Command. The ship is on its way. How, how do you know that? I returned to the capsule and sent my message. You did? When? I've been with him all the time, Al. I assure you, I have talked with my people. I guess I'd better tell them to stand off. Yes. Now, that's definitely. Now, you rest, Croc. What you see of me here will rest. Thank you. Close the bedroom door, Al. Sure. What do you think he meant by that, Al? Who knows? I got time before supper to drive over to Garrett's? If you're back in half an hour. Oh, it won't take me that long. Don't be nasty to him. You're good friends. Okay. But I don't like his interference, and I'm going to tell him so. And warn him and Dana. You went behind Al's back. Well, not really, more. The professor told Al. Because he felt guilty. Garrett, I can't believe you'd do such a thing to Al. Well, there's no harm done. But you were planning to have some man walk in from space control well, and... Mrs. Smith, if, if, if I may, <sighs> Garrett and I have genuine respect for Mr. Wilson's humanitarian feelings about the little creature from space, but he does not appreciate what a monumental discovery this is. The space capsule could advance our flight technology by light years. I mean it, darling. We have to have this knowledge. We owe it to our country, and Al says we're, well, we're supposed to do nothing about it. He also says that if you interfere, Crux people would kill you. Oh, you know, it's lucky all of you aren't dead now. I'll bet you would be if Carrie hadn't nursed this creature back to life. It would be a shame if we don't learn all we can from this, this incredible event. Well, what do we do, Professor? <sighs> Warn the man from Space Command. Possibly we can control his eagerness. Garrett, I believe that. If he makes one pass at Croc, so long. The little creature's defenseless. He's so small. He, you can stuff him in a suitcase. Hardly. And you say he's defenseless? How do you know? I can see. But what you won't see is that Croc is a highly advanced form of life. Way beyond that. And because you can't see how he could defend himself, you think he's helpless. Oh, don't count on what you think. You don't know. A mighty good supper, Gary. Crutt liked it, too. It took him a tray. It's funny. I don't think of him as a little man from outer space, but like a guest who got sick and I'm taken care of. And he isn't even... Human. Well, he responded to kindness. Most living things do. Now, you're sure you weren't nasty to Garrett and the professor? Of course not. 
I did tell Garrett to learn to mind his own business, but mostly I warned him. They take you seriously? <laughs> they thought I was talking through my hat. Well, Maud will pound some sense into Garrett's head. Maybe. The professor's got some feelings. Maybe. Well, I'm going to get to bed. Big day tomorrow. I sure hope that man from space control has some sense. Well, he's only one man. Crux said he'd talk to him and then leave. That's going to be some sight. A flying saucer sitting down right in our pasture. I wonder if they take me for a short spin. <sighs> Go to bed. If one of those things comes down, you're not going near it. Let it pick up the capsule and take Crux home. And where is that? He won't say. Only it's uh, out there where the stars begin. And what's beyond that? Huh. Even Crook doesn't know that. There she is, Professor. Right on time. It's uh, just after five. Oh, that's some big helicopter. Mm. Oh, the pilot sees us. Yeah, it's almost down. Come on. Space control. Uh, Professor Dana, Mr. Wilson. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. You know about the spaceman's warnings? Uh, yes, I've uh, I've learned what he said. Uh, Mr. Wilson, you have him in your house? Well, that's right. And he's willing to talk to you? Mm, very sensible. He has no choice. He's a prisoner. Oh, no. No, sir. No, he's not. Begging your pardon, sir, but he's my guest. And he's been just fine. Well, that's how you may see him, Mr. Wilson, but he's my prisoner. I have orders to transfer him to the war college where... Well, that's just what I was afraid of. Now, if you try any rough stuff on Crook, there'll be real trouble. Are you threatening me, Mr. Wilson? I could be. This is my property, and Crook is my guest. Now, look. You can't set yourself above the government. This capsule and this creature belong to us. They do? Well, I'll throw all of you off my land. But that's not what I was getting at when I said rough stuff would bring trouble. You're playing with something from outer space, Sanders. I'm here to take possession of a space capsule and something that resembles a man. I mean to carry out my assignment. Well, all the luck in the world for you. Crux said he'd talk to you. Maybe he can pound some sense into your thick skull. Now, see here. Oh, no, you see here. You watch your step with me. And you walk very carefully with my little friend, Croc. You are from your space control. Yes. Uh, who are you? I am called Croc. I am from a distant planet. Its name is of no importance. It is to me. That may be. How did you reach Earth? In my capsule. Mm -hmm. What was your mission? I am an explorer. Who are your people? They are like me. Yes. You have conquered space travel. We have explorers everywhere. Why did you come to Earth? I did not intend to. I went off course. Your capsule caught fire and landed here. That is right. Come with me. You are making a grave mistake. I am obeying orders. You understand that? I understand orders. But I do not obey yours. Mm hmm. This is a gun. If you resist, I'm instructed to immobilize you. <clears throat> Mr. Sanders, I, I, I. Stay out of this. Now get up, Crook, and walk out. I warned Mr. Wilson. I don't believe in magic, spaceman. That is your weapon, that metal gun. Yes, and if you don't obey, I'll use it. Just, oh! He, he, he used the gun. It's, it's just a lump of metal. Can you use it now? Mr. Sanders... Leave well enough alone. I don't know what Crook did, but... Each one like me possesses a powerful ray. More 
powerful and your strongest current. I can call it up from within me whenever I choose. Then I can point a finger and destroy. Come on, Mr. Sanders. I'm convinced. And you saved his life, Wilson. You gave refuge to an enemy of our country. I will have you charged with treason. I do not think so. Mr. and Mrs. Wilson have treated me like a visitor. I will not forget. Neither will my commander. Do not threaten the Wilsons. We have come to Earth many times on friendly missions. We could come with total destruction. I'll ask you to leave, Mr. Sanders. And do not try to remove the capsule. I'll walk you back to your helicopter, Mr. Sanders. Oh, your miraculous croc. No, just more advanced. In scientific technology. Humans one day will discover what we already know. But how about that deadly ray of yours? In your sea, you have deadly eels. On land, you have venomous snakes. My people are small, but strong. Because we possess the ray. In fighters, it is highly developed. I am a soldier and a fighter. It is time now for me to go. Al, look outside. They got a truck back into the pasture next to that big lift, and they're going to take it away. Oh, no, you know what Crush said. It will now happen. Look toward the sky. The command ship. I will go and meet it. It looks like a big mushroom. I've got to see this. Ow! Garrett to be killed! Garrett! Garrett! Come back, come back, Garrett! He sees the command ship! Look at the truck! It's a flame! And it's crumbled! Like somebody squashed it! But, but the men got away. You, you, you see them over there on the road, shielding their faces from the heat? And there are the men! It's gone. I can tell you that along with the lifter and the truck, the space capsule was turned to ashes. Garrett Smith escaped, and so did the men brought in by Professor Dana. When Al Wilson wondered later if he and his wife had consorted with the devil, she replied, as you might expect, that no, they had consorted with God. Meaning, I suppose, that they had acted in the interests of good. I'll return shortly. Our real worlds are those we explore in our nightmares. When an experience becomes too acute, we awaken, switch on a light, and forget the frightening dream. That may be foolish. We must face facts. One of them is that there are other worlds, other life. With the passing of time, centuries perhaps, there certainly will be interplanetary communication. And who knows? A crook may come to visit you. Our cast included John Beale, Marion Seldes, Joe Silver, E.D. Juster, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.